Hey there, it's a Tuesday, which means it's time for another in real life video. Uh, this week, uh, this is a bit more of a free form or I, I don't know, a, a topic that I have devised and wanted to talk about, uh, but also sort of roughly inspired by questions and, and commentary that I've gotten from folks, from general viewers like you. Uh, as always, you can you can write in your own question if you want, and uh, I'll add it to the big list, the ever-growing list. Uh, helps a lot if you put a question mark in there as well. Anyway, this week I wanted to talk about uh, sort of dialogue systems in role-playing games, right? Uh, we've seen so many different kinds of them, uh, specifically related to persuasion, not just dialogue in general, but specifically like persuading uh, characters that exist in the world and stuff like that, persuading them to, to you know, achieve your ends, whatever they may be. A lot of the times this involves, you know, a skill like charisma or personality or speech or something like that, you know, some whatever term they decide to use in that game. And I think, uh, I think better role-playing games tend to have multiple skills devoted to this, right? Um, going forward, we see less stuff where it's just like, oh, you have a speech skill. And more to where it's like, oh, you have a skill for persuasion, for intimidation, for lying, and I don't know, for like bribery or something like that. Uh, there, The more nuance, I think, the better. And of course, you can always potentially lean on stuff where it's like, oh, you work in uh, to this persuasion system, your own sort of ability to, I don't know. No science, right? Your your ability to, to understand science in this world uh, can help you persuade someone. Or your ability to understand uh, various religions and faiths in this world can maybe help you persuade someone. You know, they work together in tandem. I think that that's a lot, uh, a very ideal, uh, maybe not perfect, but, but a lot better than just having one skill, right? Which sort of brings me to my point, and this is sort of something that I've remarked on in videos in the past, but I, I think it uh, deserves a sort of uh, in-real-life video of its own, right? Uh, this conversation is, is one that, um, I, I don't know, it's fairly important within the, the grand scheme of role-playing games, I think. Uh, and that that is sort of, we can begin from the point of where... I think persuasion and conversation systems sort of fail the player, right? Um, a big example that I will talk about in in videos in the past in playthroughs of where I feel like the player is kind of let down by a system like that is actually in a game that I think has really quite good writing all around. Uh, but like I said, I think that the persuasion and skill system fails it in this regard. Um, in a moment where it's kind of important that it doesn't, um, my big critique would be for Fallout New Vegas. Uh, spoilers at the end of New Vegas, I suppose, or for the end of New Vegas, I suppose. Uh, when you have the confrontation with Legat Lanius, you of course have, uh, you can solve it with violence, right? which feels thematically appropriate. Um, the vibe at the moment, you've just sort of torn through their camp and carved your way through a gajillion legionaries. Well, I guess you aren't if you're, <laughs> if you're siding with the legion, right? Uh, but for the vast majority of players, you are not siding with Caesar's legion, especially your first playthrough. So I think the vast majority of players are familiar with what I'm talking about. But regardless, uh, you're sort of carving, uh, carving your way through there. You're tearing your way through. And you encounter Legat Lanius, who's been kind of built up as uh, the right man of Caesar, of Kaiser, whichever pronunciation you prefer. Um, and it really feels like the time for there to be a big physical confrontation, right? There is a lot of action in the role-playing game. We've had a swell of action. It feels anticlimactic to go and opt for the sort of diplomatic approach, right? Um, on the one hand, very extremely cool, right? That you can even do that. But on the other hand, um, from a sort of, from the standpoint of like the presentation, 
and you know from the the standpoint of sort of the the roller coaster of player emotion as it were it's very dissatisfying to go through and look back on the the encounter and been like yeah i just i showed up and i had high enough speech to be able to talk him down and i think in that case as well um you only need speech i can't remember if you need barter or anything else like that but i think you only need like capped out speech and there all are multiple speech checks but ultimately they're just ascending in difficulty right it's like oh at first you need like 70 to 80 and then as you keep going and going uh you need 100 speech uh in order to talk the guy down right uh that is a situation where i don't think especially a character like leg atlantis who has been built up um, if you pay attention to sort of the world building on offer there, uh, a character who has been built up as this sort of uh, very violent, very brutal character, right? Who uh, it seems astonishing that they would be open to reasoning to standing down in such a way, right? Um, true enough, the justifications that you can offer uh, do absolutely work out, right? Um as a better example of of this within the same game, a way in which I think it plays out a lot better is with uh, also New Vegas spoilers at the end of Lonesome Road with Ulysses, right? That feels a lot more um, believable. That feels a lot more appropriate. And I think a large part of that is because um, they put in the, the groundwork ahead of time, right? They have already established Ulysses as being a character that is interested in talking, right? Um, despite, you know, violent confrontations with Ulysses or, um, you know, not, not necessarily direct confrontations with Ulysses, but Ulysses putting you in harm's way, you know, uh, so to speak in that sense. Uh, however, Ulysses also very frequently comes over communications and talks to you, the player, and that sort of establishes to the player like, okay, this is a person who is interested in speaking, who does want to make a point to the player, um, who isn't necessarily set up as a big physical confrontation like Legatlanius was, right? In that sense, I think Ulysses is a better um, example of having... And, and sure enough, you can fight Ulysses, right? It works out in that way. But I think Ulysses serves as well as a good sort of dialogue tree boss, if that makes sense. A boss that you can sort of fight by way of going through a dialogue tree. And I think you can also, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe Ulysses, and this is very vital as well, um, you can defeat him by way of not even having high speech, but if you just say the appropriate things, right? Which I think is also incredibly powerful, is, is incredibly important to having a, like, like, like we had said, a successful battle through the conversation system, right? It should feel like a confrontation, like, um, you're on the verge of, of the conversation of the dialogue tree sort of exploding into something else, right? Into either the character uh, becoming physically violent with you or they, I don't know, they have, they activate something that you don't want activated. Uh, for instance, uh, that that's, that would be another great example. There needs to be that amount of tension, right there. I think it's a lot harder to pull off the conversational boss fight. But when a game is able to pull it off, I think it, it feels amazing. A great example that I often point to is Deus Ex Human Revolution uh, that does it very well. Uh, we won't, I don't, I don't think, yeah, we won't do any specific spoilers for when you have these conversations. Uh, there is one extremely early in the game Um no, no, no direct spoilers, but you're effectively talking down a hostage situation, right? So you have stakes like that. Um, the way in which they do it that I think is super effective is they make it feel very 
very much like film or television. Um, they make it feel like it, it is very much like a back and forth rather than you're just passing skill checks. Um, there are different ways to appeal to whoever you're speaking to in that game. There's like, oh, do you want to try and humble this person? You'll talk them down and be like, yeah, you're just a, you're worthless or whatever. And you try and humble them in that sense. Or you try and empathize with them. Like, I feel where you're coming from. I know what, what you're going through, stuff like that. And there are also benefits of knowing about this person that you're going up against, right? Um, there are benefits of knowing, like, what kind of personality does this person have? What sort of stakes do they have in this situation? What is most likely to work here against them? What what can I use conversationally against this individual that would work out? It's so much better, and if even if it isn't actually more nuanced, it feels so much more nuanced than just walking up, oh, I have 100 speech, I win, right? I win the, the, the conversation or whatever. It feels so much more satisfying to go up and to think like, okay, I understand roughly the ideas behind this character. How can I talk them down? How can I use what I have learned about them, right? It rewards the player for having dug into that extra information for sort of wrapping their head around the, uh, the entire situation, whether it be like something as like, as large as um, someone potentially deciding the fate of other factions or the world or whatever, or just, like I said, a hostage situation, right? Sort of understanding what their stake is, why do they care about this hostage, what are they trying to achieve by way of having them there, uh, stuff like that. I very much enjoy that. I think it's so much better than just, like, like I said, just walking up and passing a speech check, right? In that sense... Um, it feels a little dated, right? Walking up and just passing a speech check, it feels like more of an early role-playing game, uh, I don't know, concession? I don't know if that's the right... Yeah, that's definitely not the right word. Um, something that, as role-playing games and stuff, specifically in computers, right? Uh, true enough, like uh, older stuff, uh, certainly in, in the realm of tabletop games, this is, works very differently. Uh, because it's a lot more up to imagination, but in a world of in the world of video games, where there's a lot more straightforward stuff like, oh, you have skills. It's a direct representation of your ability to uh, have for your character's ability to wrap their head around this concept and convey it to other people. Right? It still feels like sort of a, a holdover from earlier times, where it's like, okay. Um, oh, a great example would be in sort of Mass Effect, right? Especially Mass Effect 1, but also going back to KOTOR 1, uh, sort of light side and dark side points, right? Um, there is very little reward for you being nuanced with your approach, and more so there is reward to, I'm going to commit to being a Paragon character. I'm going to commit to being a dark side character, right? And they even statistically reward you with um, more bonuses and stuff for your character and equipment that you can put on and whatnot if you decide, I'm just going to mainline this route. My character is just evil. It doesn't matter if I'm role-playing my character in one way and I would think like, oh, my character has some nuance here. Um, I, I'm evil, but I'm the sort of evil that operates, you know, for instance, oh, I want, my character is evil for the sake of wanting power or money or whatever, right? I'm not necessarily interested in just wanton murder, right? I'm not, my character is evil, but I'm not the kind of evil that I just think everybody should die if they're alive, right? Anybody who is against me and I don't like, they should die, right? Um, a, a very different type of evil. I've also heard good things about, uh, for instance, Tyranny, which is on our big to-do list, uh, the CRPG. I've heard that there are very interesting and nuanced approaches to being evil, because it is an entire game uh, about that, about being an evil character. Um, but yeah, I think, I think in this sense, we have a lot of room to run with uh, making advances in sort of how to handle a conversation, how to make it feel more confrontational without it coming to blows. Right. I think there's so much opportunity. Like I said, um, my, 
my favorite example of this being handled very well is Deus Ex Human Revolution. And a lot of it, frankly, is owed to presentation, right? Um, if we sort of, if we take a step back and look at what makes what what makes it exciting or thrilling even in the moment uh, to have it come to blows, right? Uh, it is because some of these games, you know, we we've developed sort of the vibe of, or we we've sort of leaned more into. Okay, a lot of even very narrative role playing games have some feeling of action, right? Um, even even like turn based CRPGs or whatever, right? Like. Uh, I haven't started it yet, but Baldur's Gate 3, um, the dice rolls appear up on the screen. It feels satisfying. There's good uh, visual and sound effects playing, giving the player feedback whenever you land a blow, right? feels very good. We need to have the same sort of feeling for an important conversation. Not every conversation needs to be this, right? It's totally fine, I think, if there's, like, incidental quests or whatever, like, oh, you walk up to someone, and, oh, shoot, they, they're they having a bad day. Speech check, make them feel better, right? Or speech check, make them feel worse, <laughs> depending on what kind of character you're playing. Uh, but I think that's fine there, but when you're having, like, a big pivotal moment in either a side quest arc or the main story uh, with a very important character that you know a lot about, I think you are afforded that opportunity and you should seize that opportunity to sort of, you know, reward the player for having paid attention, for having understood this character, understood their motivations, understand what's driving them, their own sort of personality, right? Um, in that sense, like I said, it gives you room to also build out the characters, right? Uh, it's a direct interaction with the player's agency and uh, your own ability to sort of develop a character who, you know, otherwise you maybe won't ever see the character again. But like I said, it's a conversational boss fight. Um, it's a sort of other way you can play through it, right? And... I, I think what's really dope is what I think is really dope is that we're seeing more and more of this, right? Um, I think uh, an interesting telltale sign of this is um, something that I personally like. I don't know if, if everybody likes this, though, but I do. Uh, when you find a skill check in a game that either you cannot pass it or you can pass it, but it's still screws you over, right? You're fighting such insurmountable odds that no matter what happens, you are still getting screwed over in some way, right? You're able to succeed, but your success is small in comparison to whatever you're fighting against, and its success just completely blows you out of the water, right? We see this more and more. Um, I very much like it. It's sort of subverting the expectation i would say that has been built up wherein you show up you pass your speech check and somehow magically somebody decides to just out of nowhere go along with whatever you want right it's practically mind control um i like it because it does subvert that you you would think that oh well i have the the net the requisite skill check uh you're just going to do whatever i want right and the game sort of refutes that and says like, oh, actually, no, this character's convictions are this. There's no way in hell you could possibly convince them otherwise. Uh, it's going to come to blows or they're going to get their way in this sense. Uh, you'll be able to show agency in ways in which you have developed your character, right? You'll be able to show like, oh, uh, you made a pretty effective appeal here, but it doesn't matter. Or, oh my gosh, you completely botched this, uh, but... Ultimately, it doesn't matter. The other character, this NPC, their um, their place in the world, what they have, their resources or whatever, um, far outweigh your own, right? I think it, it leads to such more interesting conversations. It makes it feel more like uh, film or television, which I think is maybe the best case scenario for a video game, right? As you're sort of having a conversation in a video game, I think maybe that is what you should aim for when it comes to uh, making tension 
in the conversation, just, a, you know, an interactive show or whatever. The same sort of tension that you feel when you watch a show and someone's having a very intense conversation with another character. And you're like, wow, how is this going to turn out? Uh, one of, it really feels like one of these two characters is either going to end up dead or uh, something very pivotal is going to change in the state of the the story or in the state of the world or whatever right uh we should be trying to evoke that same feeling i think and like i said um maybe it's just the optimist in me uh but it feels like we are very much going in that direction right is very much a direction that um on a technical level isn't too difficult uh but on a writing level is a lot more difficult right um Fortunately, like I said, um, in, in another aspect of it, I think we're seeing more and more games uh, and more and more folks sort of recognizing the value of just having um, a very fleshed out world, having a lot of really good writing, uh, devoting a lot of time to exposition for that writing. Even like, um, I think, I think there's something to be said for like in a game or whatever, even if it's not amazing writing, even if it's kind of um, ho-hum, even if it's kind of like, like, I, I don't know, it doesn't have to blow you out of the water. So long as it's not horrible, just having more time devoted to it, I think can sometimes elevate what is otherwise kind of like um, milk toast to being a little bit more intriguing, a little bit more exciting. Right. Um, the, the, the case where you don't want that, I would say, is like if, if it's just very incidental stuff, right? Very much like, oh, this isn't even a side quest. This is just a miscellaneous quest, right? You don't want to hear uh, 50 gajillion lines of dialogue about somebody's shopping list, right? Like I said, that's a case where you sort of decide, okay, our character has... 75 points in barter they're going to be able to help this person with their shopping list or whatever right uh that's that's sort of uh the idea sort of understanding in within your own story right and of course these are different people working on the same parts of the game right the same person who writes the overarching narrative isn't necessarily the same group of people who may be working on side quests or whatever right but uh it all comes down to sort of understanding on a larger scale like okay how important is this interaction relative to this other one is this something that's very pivotal to the main story something that um could theoretically whether or not it does but could theoretically change uh the entirety of our fictional world or is this you know like i said somebody picking up a loaf of bread at the store right it doesn't really matter it's just another way to sort of help build out the world to sort of help the player um come to terms with their own way in which they're building out their character right oh i'm a character who's good at bartering right or maybe i'm not maybe i really screw up this um uh this shopping list for this person right i get or maybe i don't know anything about bread uh i just got them bread that they're deathly allergic to or something like that this bread kills them <laughs> right um uh, it makes for a fun way to sort of exp for the player to express themselves in that way i think um, and like I said, uh, I, th I think we're continually getting better and better about it. Um, every we look at role playing games and stuff, uh, we're just able to sort of I feel like as we're making fewer advances in fidelity and like technical systems, we're starting to see more instances where we're bringing in stuff like that stuff like um, allowing for more player choice, more player expression, right? And at the same time, we're having other games, like I've mentioned before in the my different my own archetypes of role playing games, we're seeing different games sort of shore up different strengths, right? Somewhere it is based on systems and stuff interacting and others where it is based on narratives and all of that and sort of dialogue trees navigating through them, making them feel um, very uh, important to the player, feel very. Um, like like you're going through and you're actually making meaningful decisions. Uh, I think I think things are looking up, right? I I don't know. I I'm an optimist, but this is just something that I wanted to sort of bring up. Uh, it's something that I think about a lot, especially as we delve into more of it. We see more different conversation systems in games. Uh, I think there's a whole bunch of opportunity for it. Like I said, uh, my favorite 
example is Deus Ex Human Revolution. If you're unfamiliar with the game, it's not even necessarily a role-playing game. It's more akin to an immersive sim, but certainly it blends in aspects of role-playing games, right? And like I had mentioned, uh, role-playing games are no stranger to these sorts of conversation systems. If anything, uh, it's a chicken and egg situation. One came, the <laughs> role-playing games, tabletop role-playing games, uh, certainly predated and immersive sims sort of uh, take inspiration from that in that regard but uh yeah not not really a big through point of it other than to say um look forward to the future and stuff enjoy what we have where i feel like we're making headway in this uh it's very cool just sort of putting my my thoughts out here in video form right i thought it'd be a fun little topic to talk about uh anyway probably next week we will take another viewer submit question um, as I had said, this one roughly inspired by a lot of what folks written have written in and sort of, um, I don't know, my own experiences as we uh, wrap up the Baldur's Gate 2 playthrough and very shortly we will start up 3, right? All right, that I think ought to do it for this week. Until next time, please take care of each other.